Hey, this is episode number 62 of Gen X Amplified, and today I am having another special live conversation with speaker, author, media executive, and passionate champion for women, Michelle G. And we'll be chatting about the power of nurturing strong relationships and also how to be resilient during difficult and uncertain times, such as the current coronavirus pandemic that all of us are going through right now. Now, this is the homeschool quarantine edition, so I have my baby girl right here who wants to do the intro. All right, go ahead. So are you ready? Let's do it. (laughs) All right, I love it. But it's the way of the universe. Wow. And so you can't expect to be connected if you've never connected. Wow. If you're if you're a bad person, don't expect a good relationship. <laughs> it all comes back to yourself. Right? <laughs> welcome, welcome to Gen X Amplified, where we bring you inspirational and entertaining conversations with successful Gen X leaders and entrepreneurs. <laughs> this is the show created just for you. The powerful generation between the boomers and millennials to help you you amplify your story maximize your impact and become gen exceptional in business and in life now now here's your host adrian porter Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Amplify Live, the podcast and live stream dedicated to the powerful generation between those brilliant boomers and those magnificent millennials. What is up, party people? How are you doing? I'm going to jump right in and introduce our fabulous guest. So she is a speaker, an author, a media executive, thought leader, wife, mother, and is currently serving as the managing partner for the Strategic Alliance. She is also a marketing and sales veteran, having worked for worked as an executive for some of the top brands and media companies in the world, including the Endeavor Network, BET, CNN, a and the History Channel, the Weather Channel, and so many others. Now, as I mentioned, she is an author and has written three books, including Strategic Life and Career Winning Strategies for Women, Strategic 2.0, Her Plan, Her Power, Her Purpose, and a third book, Success on Your Terms. And she is here to discuss not only her inspirational journey, but also the power of relationships, especially during these tough times. So without further ado, please welcome my Gen Exceptional guest, the wonderful, the phenomenal, the superwoman, <laughs> Mr. T. Chick herself, Michelle G. Michelle, what is going on? You better give me that kind of intro. I like that. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> I love it. Hey, you know, it's, it's, it's well, it's well deserved. It's well deserved. So people are watching, they're tuning that. in and we have uh, Melissa Anthony from Johns Creek. Georgia on LinkedIn. What's going on? Christina from Connecticut. Awesome. Great to see you. Always good to see you. And we have people on LinkedIn. I mean, sorry, on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. But but Michelle, how are you holding up right now? What's going on? Talk to me. Let me tell you something. When God says, go sit the hell down, I'm paying attention. (laughs) And that's exactly what he said. And so I'm sitting down, you know, like it's not lost on me that uh, people have been sick and people have lost ones. Like right. some of my close friends have had some close people that are lost. And mm-hmm. I, I know people are sacrificing. My husband is um, in the Army Reserve, so he serves our country. He also works for Bank of America. But those people that are on the front lines and serving for us, like you can't start any podcast. And it's, start, it's starting to sound like a repetitive um, statement. But, um, yo, man, we got to take our hats off for those folks because, yes. like, it's real up in the streets right now. It is. It is. It's, it's It is. I mean, I've never I mean, none of us have ever experienced anything like it. And you, you know, you couple this uh, crisis, this pandemic, especially for people that are watching and, you know, my lane, you know what what I'm passionate about, people that are in that mid career phase, Gen Xers generationally. And a lot of us, man, we have little kids running around. <laughs> we have, we're trying to homeschool. We have I our know. jobs. My kids are old. Oh, thank God. <laughs> 13 and 15. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> look at you. I got, look, I got a four year old, and you know how that is. Oh, right? yeah. 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 We started Ooh, a little late, but I have that's like, <laughs> homeschooling. That's doing homework again. Man, mm. uh, 11 years old and four years old. But you know, it's all good. I okay. love them. One of, one of the things that this has happened, I mean, you try to sift through the weeds and try to find the joy in all this is that it allowed me to spend yeah. more time with the kids but i tell you sure. I, you know trying to be a teacher for fifth grade for my 11 year old and daycare kindergarten stuff 
and work and it's it's a beast but you know we, we we're trying to hold on as much as possible as yeah, all we that's can what's do. up that's what's up so you know we, let's let's get right into it so as i mentioned in the yeah. intro you have such a fascinating story a journey you are what i call definitely a powerful gen x thought leader a phenomenal superwoman, a mother, a wife, a business owner, an executive. And there are so many layers in this tapestry of your professional life that I would love to just start off, if you wouldn't mind briefly, Michelle, just walking us through your professional journey of how you got into not only the media business, but becoming the leader that you are now. And what made what led what was the road that led you to being such a champion for women? You know, so let me unpack this a little bit because there are some things that I didn't write in my book and there's some things that I don't talk about a lot and nobody wants to hear the same old broken record. So I would love, right. Adrian, since we go way back to the Namek days. We go nay back, um, oh my God. And, yeah, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and share with you, you know, growing up, I really, I didn't really like myself. Mm. Like I was, um, I was torn. So my mom is um, from Montreal. She's Caucasian. My dad's a really big, tall, black guy, 6'5". From New Orleans, and I say that because a lot of people think, oh, she's light skin. Cause my father had a really dark hue to his yeah. skin, and people demanded that I choose what I wow. was. And and I'm telling the story because so many times we spend so much energy mm-hmm. on things that don't even matter. Like, why do why I'm not trying to like tell you what I am or prove to you I'm one of the like why do you even care and right. the world puts us in this box and especially people of color mm. we a lot of t- a lot of times we have to try and justify something or say who we were so I spent a lot of my youth unfocused trying to like live up to other people's standards of who I should be mm-hmm. and when that uh, when I stopped doing that then I had a clearer picture and then I could I started to to make some strides and hence that's probably one of the reasons why I didn't go to school until I was 30 because I was just unfocused okay it was I mean like super unfocused and the point of that story is that if you're 30 or 40 or 50 let me tell you something it is never too late mm. to figure out what you want to do and the first part of that is to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I like who I am. I like who I see. Right. I, I can be down with you. Right. And if people don't start there, you really can't build a relationship with anybody, Adrian, if you're not trying to have a relationship with yourself. That's number one. Right. So my relationship with women, I see a lot of women. They do so many things for other people because they really don't want to spend time for themselves. They don't think they're worth them doing something for themselves, asking for what they're worth, mm. you know, raising your hand, pulling a seat up at the table. You want to sit on the sidelines. Mm. And so I, I can empathize with that. And so I made it one of my life's calling to tell her, yo, you are worth it. Pull up a seat at the table, be bold, all of those things. Wow. Now, just quickly, you mentioned earlier and, I, and you've told this story many times. I've heard you speak and we've yeah. talked about you going back to school at the age of 30 and yeah. Did did it take a lot of um, encouragement for you to do that? Was it was it a tough decision at that moment? Did you feel that well, uh, I may be around people that maybe ten years younger than I am, or were you literally from the beginning just very confident in that decision? Hell no! Uh, <laughs> hell to the no, no! You know, so as, as the story goes, um, I was in a relationship. That relationship didn't work out. Yeah. Um, and at 26, you know, I didn't like my relationship. I didn't like myself. I was uneducated and God presented himself to me in a dream. Mm. And I wrote about this in strategic, um, and you know, like when you have a parent and they're so like pissed and disappointed, they don't say anything. Like I would rather have someone yelling at me because at least I could defend myself. Right, right. And God really just stood there and said nothing. And cause mm. he was so disappointed in the decisions I made. And so for me, I knew that um, education was a tool and a key, a weeding process because I I had just seen it so many times and I had friends who had gone to college and they were doing well and they were Mm -hmm. happy. So I knew I had to go back to school. I knew I could control that. Um, And I had done well in high school and I went to a community college. So I actually got, you know, I had someone who helped me. Let's talk about relationships, a counselor um, at the community college and she invested in me, man. Her name was Doris Holmes. Yo, Doris Holmes. And she got me a, uh, and she got me okay. a full scholarship to Golden Gate University. Wow. Um, and then show me how to get some other money, which I didn't spend appropriately, but that's a whole nother set. I'll bring Lynn Richardson on to talk about finances. <laughs> got it. Um, but then I, um, so, you know, like we get signs all the time, right? Adrian, like 
and we're like, oh, were they talking to me? Was that whisper for me? Was that God talking to me? Was that? Yeah. Yes, listen. But we're so busy moving so fast, doing so much, we can't even hear the whisper right. that is meant for us. And so I got quiet. I listened. And listen, when I quit that, I had to work at the front desk at a hotel, which I, I really did not enjoy because people really treat front desk employees poorly. Mm. Um and it's a, it's a really humbling job. And I had to clean people's houses at night because I just couldn't afford to not do those things, even though I was going to school free. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lesson in humility, but it was also a lesson in service. And so I'm able to build relationships because I stood at a front desk for four years and said, can I help you? What do you need? Mm -hmm. How can I make your experience better? I wasn't allowed to say the word no. So a lot of times you think you're building these relationships because you went to this or did that. This I did it at a whole tail okay wow. yeah and that's an experience that built this foundation for me wow that's that's such a powerful story i mean you you truly you know you had a you had a goal and you didn't let that stand in your way and you mentioned which i'm mm -hmm. so glad you mentioned this early in this conversation about the power of relationships and it started i'm sure it started even before this experience at the <clears throat> hotel but it really manifested itself at that moment because you didn't let that deter you as far as how rude the people were treating you and you had this vision and then you yeah. went back to school, you you obviously succeeded, and then you went into your career in media, I'm assuming around that time. And and, and you mentioned earlier in our conversation, so we definitely go way back, <laughs> uh, way yeah. back, uh, back in the <laughs> early 2000s, back from my New York days and my age. Look, when neither one of us had gray hair, no, okay? Like, see Mine this? is just died blonde. <laughs> I love it. I tell people all the time, I embraced the silver probably a few years ago. And I say, look, you know, what? and hey, it's all good. And uh, but yeah, back then and in 2003, I don't think any of us had gray hair. And and that was the old <laughs> the cable days. This was pre social media. Uh -oh. And actually, speaking of that, so quick, I'll do a quick shout out to two very good friends of yours that I know that I, one of them I met through media. That's Daphne Lavoie. So Daphne, what's going on? Dad, Dad, what Dad. up? Uh, I know you're good friends with her. And then Nicole, um, we were Coco. Former, <laughs> is that what you call it? Coco? Nicole Hall at, from my old yeah. church in Brooklyn, Emmanuel. So if you're watching this, hello, give a good shout out. I'm giving a shout out. But anyway, yeah. So, you, <laughs> so back in the day, so yeah, you started your career and I mentioned some of those brands early on, like the CNNs and the A&E. &E, and I think at the time when you and I met back in the early 2000s, you were at A&E, &E, I believe. So what, when you started your career in media and you work for some really great media companies what was that like especially coming into this new world and yeah. trying to navigate the world not only being a woman and not only being someone that's you know probably at the time like in the 30s or what have you early 40s 30s and being african-american so you had all of these things that are powerful assets but in the corporate world a lot of times they can be seen as a hindrance not to you but a hindrance to progression can you talk a little bit about that feeling yeah, so, but I do want to just, so after I left the hotel, I went into um, the telecom industry. Got it. And I spent three or four years there. And the reason I said that, because I was a tax manager. So I have a finance degree. I was a tax manager and I did, like, that wasn't my, you know, like I'm a people person, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I met at a meeting and you like you always show up prepared. You always dress for the next job you want. You have the attitude of the next opportunity you want. Got it. So I met the CFO of the company that I work for. And I was like, what's up? I have my same personality. I was like, I wanted to meet you. You know, this and this. That, that. He's like, why are you in finance? Like, you need to be a salesperson. Like, mm. like the way you just rolled up on me. And so the story goes, and I didn't write this in any of my books. <laughs> The story goes, he said, listen, I'm going to introduce you to one of the sales managers. I think she'd be a great <clears throat> role model for you. So I met her. I go to interview with her. Now I'm going to be taking a pay cut because I'm going into sales. I had to earn my keep, right? Yeah. And I go to the interview. I sit in front of her. Her zipper's down. So I'm like, yo, do I tell her her zipper's down? Oh, my. <laughs> you know, and sometimes we have to have intuition and make split that you know in real time decisions right, i was like right. you know what there's no way i can let this lady go i said this may jack up our interview but yo yo zipper is down and i just can't even have you sit in another meeting she's wow. like oh my god i've been in 10 meetings in my so we built wow. a relationship because i told her the truth mm. i was honest i was transparent and she hired me because i did that <laughs> so i had to share that story because a lot of times you know like we're trying to be something we're not like just you got to be who you are or mm. it's not going to work so then i get into the cable business 
Um, and I went through the Walter Cates Foundation, just like you know, which was an amazing yes. organization. Now they fund organizations, but at the time they would take talented people with a certain set of skills and they would place you into the cable business because the cable business back then at least had enough insight to know that the consumers were changing, that the world was changing. Mm-hmm. And so they wanted to have representation in the in the building, right? So I interviewed with VH1 and I interviewed with the Weather Channel. And yeah. I was like, I'm going to work for VH1. <laughs> and I have a really, really, really good friend. His name is York Eggleston. He's like, no, you ain't. <laughs> He's like, you going to the Weather Channel. He says, you know why? I was like, don't, what, why? He's like, because there's no one there like you. He's like, stand out, be memorable. And so a lot of times when we're making career decisions, especially if we're going to pivot, don't go to someplace where everyone's like you. Be a unicorn, be different, go someplace and build a brand for yourself. And it doesn't matter how old you are. I was in my late 30s at the time. Okay. um, And it was the best single decision coming into this business that I made because everyone said, wait, she works where? And everyone remembered who I was because I'd be like, I'm Michelle Jam at the Weather Channel. I'm gonna make your day sunny. I'm gonna make it bright. You know, and then I created all these taglines around <laughs> my it, presence there. But it was a really, really strategic <laughs> mm. decision. Where we go matters. Where we work matters. You know, our brand matters. Wow, our brand matters. That was a very, very strategic uh, decision, actually. Um, right. <laughs> but that's 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 powerful. I love I love the way you immediately. Uh, took a hold of those magical moments that could either propel you or hinder you. And I mean, what I mean by that is that, for example, the interview process and seeing the zipper down. And that's actually a pretty cool tip. Now, for those of you who are seeking jobs, you know, not, I don't know if you should try to look to see if people's zippers are down to try to make it. But, but, (laughs) (laughs) but the moral of the story is be yourself, be authentic. Don't be scared of just really showing who you are and how you can add value and you were adding value to that person now there may have been some discomfort there not maybe not by you or by them but at the end of the day look what happened is that you got hired yeah. and then using that moment of working for the weather channel coming up with those little lines i love that that's a great nugget a powerful nugget bomb just about number one look at ways where you can add value no matter how big or how small if you can get yep. somebody from point a to point b that's adding value. You obviously got that person from point B because they felt confident and comfortable the rest of the day because they realized, well, she looked out for me. And when Absolutely. you do that, the rewards would be so fruitful. So that's a great, great story. So yeah, the Weather Channel, a and CNN. And then you, during the course of working for these great companies, you decided to become an author. You decided to put pen to paper yeah. to get your story out. What made you write that first book and what made you come up with this awesome brand strategic uh, with the book? You know, um, I could see at the time that the marketplace was changing and it takes for you to slow down and pay attention. I I can guarantee a lot of people don't Google and I do this all the time. What jobs are going to be necessary in 20 years? Okay. You know, like what jobs are no longer going to be valid, right. right? Like a perfect example is, I don't know if you saw this, um, and my good friend Amari and I were talking about it, but Travis Scott is getting ready to do his world tour in Fortnite. Mm. And not only is he going to do his tour, but you can buy merchandise <laughs> from the, like, like 10 years ago, you like, okay, gaming, fine. You had a little council, but right. now like the whole world is changing. And so you have to understand. And so if I wanted to not be, bound Mm. to something I didn't want to do. I needed to be able to have my own voice, my own brand. And I could see at the time influence were kind of coming up on the scene. So I was like, you know what? Then I asked God to guide and direct me. I was like, you know what? I'm in corporate America. I had been at 12. uh, I had spent 12 years at three companies with the same job title. Shame on me. Mm. My bad. Okay. And so when I realized that it was my fault and that I asked God to stop changing them and to change me, because there's clearly something wrong with me, I can't continue to blame everybody else. I said, you know what, I, re- I actually have a story and I have a path and I can share that. And I know if I share that, I'll get a blessing from that. So, you know, a young woman asked, she's like, why are you sharing all your secrets? I said, because I have a si- assigned seat with my name on it that you cannot sit in unless I give it to you. And I'm not going to do that. So right. I can share every secret with you. It's all good. <laughs> um, 
So that's why I wrote the book. It really was about having something else in case corporate America blew up or the television is starting to go away because I'm seeing streaming come and less people are watching and there's multiple screens. And so I wanted I wanted to have my own brand. Yes. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If I can continue just for a couple more minutes is that. If you really look at my history, I didn't write that book until I went to BET and BET Her was formed because now everywhere I go, I'm talking about women. That's talking true. about women for BET Her. Right. I'm talking about women because of my book. The community organizations that I work with that about women and what that what I call that is alignment. Mm. And alignment means that I have to give less energy, less time, because everything that I'm talking about is actually the same thing. Wow, in every true. single part of my life. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's, it, no, it's, it's like people have to be aligned mm. or they're not going to be as successful as they can. That is true. I remember that time, uh, BT Herc, because it was centric before. You were, you were there during the moment when it rebranded to BT Herc, correct? I rebranded it. <laughs> that was, and, and li- <laughs> listen, no, dope, right? Because I could see that black women have power. So we're spending 60 hours a week on our screen. We created every movement in this century that is meaningful, that that society has taken on to push something forward. You know, we are um, the number one set of entrepreneurs. So I knew all of these data and insights. So I know I'm a powerful consumer, right. but there was nothing that was speaking to me on an ongoing basis that I could be proud of. Mm. So I built out the platform. You'll love this. Power doesn't matter where it comes from. My assistant, Brittany Dorsett, created the logo. Okay. <laughs> and we presented this notion that black women deserved a network. Um, and we're, we're super proud of like, it's going to be part of my legacy that I had, you know, I was the architect of that conversation and pushed that thing through and then wrote a book on the back of it, which was even doper. Yeah. That's an understatement. Part of your legacy. I didn't, I didn't know that. Oh my, okay. So you weren't just an employee during the moment of BT her, <laughs> you actually, oh, that is, that is such a great story. And it, it was such a clear, compelling brand and it spoke directly to the, to so, the heart. And you're right. I remember when your book came out and you started on the circuit, it was around, it was aligned right? with the same time. And what that uh, did for you, obviously, is that when you're aligned with such a master brand and you're speaking truth and you're speaking power, you're speaking value that's congruent with the impressions that are out there with BET Heard, then you have Strategic Chick, and then you have Michelle. It's all a beautiful thing, right? Yeah, like it, like seriously. And if people are looking right now and they're not happy where they are, they want to pivot. Right. Like, what are they passionate about? What else can they put on their resume that yes. is a, a brand extension, a line extension? And if there's nothing because what you do currently you hate so much, then right. what are the other things that you've done in your life that you can branch off of? And what relationships have you built to help you do that? Like, that's what's, you know, I had a conversation this morning with a gentleman by the name of um, Kevin Carroll amazing guy he's a a company called catalyst he's an author okay um and when you look at his story he went from the air force he was a trainer doing something else then he wanted to become a trainer for the air force but they said no so then he took a step back and became a trainer for a school okay and then that became a trainer for a sports team in the school that actually happened to practice or something with the at, like around the Philadelphia 76ers and then he went there and then he went to Nike but if you see he didn't get promoted based on his job that he had in the Air Force but what he loved to do and how he would still continue to do that mm. and then it just grew into something that is just this amazing brand now mm, mm, that's awesome and that's very similar I mean, that's very similar to your story is that you still had this undercurrent of what made you you and there were different brands, different things, even though you did see where you mentioned earlier that you, your position didn't really change and it remained stagnant from a title perspective. You did something yeah. about it. And now you're doing such great work with the book and and what you're doing now. So, as you know, this show and that's why I was so excited to have you on um, is really speaking directly aligned with my mission and my purpose to transform mid-career malaise yeah. and midlife malaise into mastery and then when we talk people that are in this mid-career 40 plus phase when we think about generationally obviously it's people that are gen x and even maybe early boomers but people that are in that sandwich middle and a lot of us a lot of us are feeling stuck and stressed and squeezed and either in a pivot or trans positional moment in our life professionally and we don't know what to do we're trying to either move up or we're trying to move in or we're trying to hold on. And then on top of that, you put this current 
pandemic and this current crisis yeah. on top of that. I mean, there are a lot of stressed folks out there, especially that in my audience. So I would love if you could just talk about how are you holding up during this crisis? Has COVID affected you personally? And with that, spread some strategic uh, strategic nuggets mm-hmm. for the Gen X uh, mid-career, mid-life, de- definitely women, but also anyone, because um, I've actually gotten a lot of value from the things and from the nuggets that you have shared um, throughout our yeah. relationship. Just talk to them specifically about this current pandemic crisis and about the power of relationships and just be, be becoming more resilient than they already are. So I'll talk about covid let me talk about this first and let me separate the two and talk about that um, because I actually went through the, you know, I, I actually had it. I was like, yo, am wow. I going to make it? Wow. Um, yeah, it was, yo, it was crazy. Wow. Uh, but but you, I do want to talk you're okay. about this. You're okay now, right? Yeah, everything is good now, right? No, no, yeah, I'm great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. That's about great. to go run for two miles soon as we get off this phone with my <laughs> okay. family. Okay. Uh, but I want to talk about this and I want anybody who is watching this video right now and doing something else and multitasking, put put, put judge it down. Because I need you to <laughs> like really listen to this. Th- what an opportunity to set a level playing field because many times women like me and brothers like you aren't invited to the table. <laughs> And when we are, when we raise our hand, we're invisible. Mm. And so now, because it's virtual, like I feel like there's an even playing ground. So what are you doing? So what are you doing to be seen, to be heard virtually now that there aren't the same restrictions because you're not in person? Right. So did you wake up this morning and Google your company and see what it's talking about? Do you know that 90% of people never go on their own company's website? That's true. Never. I can see that. So. Why not? Mm. Don't you want to know what your president is saying? Based, forget about the emails. What is he saying to the consumer that you can now understand, take and send back? Right. So I look at my company's website, what they're saying. I look at what jobs are open and offered. I look at what we're doing in the community, diversity, and inclusion, news, financials. Know your company. Why, why not? Right. And then and then expand on that. Know your industry. So now you have an opportunity. Yes. Right to send an email with an article to somebody you're trying to build a relationship internally and say, I just saw this. I thought I would send it to you. They ain't got nothing to do, but listen, because what what they're doing. That's right. We have got to be smart and use this downtime as an opportunity to build, grow, reach out to people who would never take our call or respond to our emails because of our title or whatever the case Mm. is. Now is there that now there's an opportunity mm-hmm. to do something different. And mm-hmm. I say, take it, take it. Don't be overwhelming. Don't be stalkerish. Don't be crazy, <laughs> but build relationships now, now that their curtain is removed or actually put up and they can't really see you. You know, yes. now it's just a nice gesture. Now it's just a piece of information. Now is data and insights and statistics that you're sharing with your team. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like now's an opportunity to bring people together and be a real leader and show leadership skills that you would not have an opportunity under normal circumstances. Now, if you don't work for corporate America and you're an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. you can still do the same thing with other people because now you can build to relationship to your consumer base, to other people, people you're trying to get to like be useful, be valuable, start with them and not you. And it's a powerful, powerful tool. It is. Well, such value bombs. We're going to, we're going to unpack that even more because you started off talking about a lot of the action and execution that has to happen. And I totally agree with you. And you and I talked about this a little bit before the show is that I talk a lot about growth mindset, um, having a growth mindset and changing your mindset and your mental state. And there are some that are out there that can see the destination of where they want to go. For example, they want to move into this new company or they're at a current organization and they Mm -hmm. want to move up or they're an entrepreneur and they want to figure out what product or service should I sell? Or if they're currently selling a product or service, how can I sell more of that? However, they see the destination, but they don't have the mindset yet to execute the way that they need to execute. They're either doubting themselves or they, or they don't feel that they have the skill set portfolio. How do we work on our mindset? How do we change our, our thinking that we do have something to offer, that we are powerful, that if we do a self inventory, that we can pull out those valuable gems and nuggets that will be able to add value to others. How do how do we start with mindset even before the execution? 
you know, I have this little chalkboard series, right? And yeah. so people are really visual. Yeah. And you, you, if you don't reaffirm yourself, then nobody's going to do that for you, right? Mm -hmm. So it has to start there. And so I like writing affirmations on my board. You know, I have things like written and Psalms 37. And <laughs> so I remind myself every morning, you know, I, I happen to be a praying person. So I know I walk in faith. I don't walk in fear, but everyone doesn't have the same beliefs or background. Right. But you got, and, and it's a real thing because mental illness is going to be on the rise after this. People are That's stuck. True. They're, they don't know where to go. Like it's, it's, it's like a really, really, really thing. And I know it sounds easy for me to say, but how difficult is it just to say in the morning when you look in the mirror, I'm amazing mm. every day right. for 30, I'm amazing. Yes. And you will, because what you say, you begin to believe. And this is another known fact. Not only that, but I have done this and, and it's proven that I actually whisper words to people when I'm in hallways that I want them to think about me. <laughs> oh, Michelle, she's a strategist. I said in every meeting, Michelle, she, oh, she, oh, me, I'm a strategist. I then love I it. could hear people in the car. Oh, Michelle, she's a strategist. Wait, like, because it's you. Wait, you. Yes. Act, you wait. You so you whisper yeah. in the third person in their ear, in their subconscious. No, just walking by. Just, just walking, walking by. by. Like, <laughs> oh man, oh man, I'm a strategist. I love like, it. That was really Michelle. Like that. I love. And it. then people, if they hear it enough, then they they don't they don't even they just start to believe it yeah. because words matter. Words are powerful. We don't give ourselves enough credit. We right. don't love ourselves enough. So even if you hate yourself, I, I do this with my kids and my husband and I. We're like, mm. you don't get to say anything negative. That yes. oh, that was negative. Nope, 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 nope. Don't say anything at all. Right. Because it really, really, really matters. So like people have got to begin to say positive things about themselves even if they aren't true they're going to become true mm -hmm. because you're going to begin to believe it yes i love that and words are powerful and i do the same with my kids in in different ways but i'll always try to instill positive affirmations i tell my four-year-old daughter never say can't can't you know don't say i can't Absolutely. i can and she's always and even out like the other day i went by her and i said kk i call her, her name is kaylin i call her kk at times i said i said what does daddy always say I can like she knows it. It's intuitive, and she's going to remember yeah. that. And Cameron, you know, he's he's heard it all his life. But I I truly believe that, and and not only for my kids, I do it for myself. You know, I I get up every morning and I write in my little five minute journal, which is a great journal about three things that yep. I'm grateful for, and what am I going to achieve today? And you be a, you would be amazed of how powerful having gratitude and affirmation and changing your mindset how powerful it is. And again, it's not always easy because trust works. me, I have days where I don't even feel like I'm trying to squeeze that third thing that I'm grateful for. I'm like, okay, I got that. I have the first two, but what is that third thing? But <laughs> it, it so works. And for I'm sure. so glad that you double down on that. Um, so speaking of, so mindset, that's great. So mindset, affirming yourself, understanding your value, being grateful on positive words. And then we have the execution that you mentioned earlier, yeah. being proactive and doing research, taking this time, this downtime. Somebody actually in LinkedIn said that it's easy to reach people right now. Keith Williams, shout out to Keith Williams. Uh, this is a land grab right now. And, I, and you're right, Keith. And you're right, Michelle. Right now, when everyone is at home, think about what impressions are. You know, I come from sales and marketing, marketing, and you come from sales as well. Yeah. You think about reach and frequency and impressions. Where, where are the eyeballs and where are the earbuds? Mm -hmm. They're right here on the computer. And what you can do proactively is that you can do the research. You can try to find some time and then just start making a list of, of, of people that you feel that you could reach and add value to and just start giving information. Now, sometimes it sounds easy and you and I are, you know, wax poetic in this and it sounds easy, but there are some people that they're struggling, especially right now with COVID and kids and work and and they're trying to just maintain a sense of sanity. A sense yeah. of sanity. How do we continue to just be inspired? To continue to tell ourselves that we're great, that we can amiss this. Like how how how, how are you doing it and how how should people approach this because it can be very difficult right now and to be resilient it, i mean nobody's gonna really have an answer to that question like yep. i'm gonna have an answer based on yeah. you know how i live how right. i walk and where i am now right um because 20 years ago i may have been a hot mess and i may be twerking on instagram <laughs> with a cash app up <laughs> but that's not bad that's not my walk um, so I'm going to, I'm going to say this yeah. and I'm going to say that I know that this works and that you have to have faith and trust 
when I tell you this, right? That the exercise that I went through is I changed myself because I was not where I wanted to be. And you have to be really honest. And what there's no better time now to be honest with yourself to pull in people that you trust mm-hmm. to give you some feedback about it. And that's a real let, let me let me show you. You know the size of a mustard seed that we talk about faith, right? It's right. that size because you can't share that with everybody because people want to give you bad negative energy. They want to expunge upon you how they really feel about themselves. So you got to keep your circle tight. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say I keep my eliminate elimination list tight. It's mm-hmm. like a grocery list. Bought that? Go. Oh, you got no. That, your block. Your numbers block. Like as soon as you show me right. who you really are. Mm. No, you got to go. Um, the other thing you have to do is like, please don't send out messaging to people and you don't know who you are, that you mm. don't have your own narrative written, that you know your company's mission statement better like than that. you know your own. Yeah, I please like that. Please don't do that. Okay. Right? And so I have gone painstakingly to have a 30-second introduction of myself. I'm Michelle Thornton G. I'm all about cultural currency. I'm passionate about it. I know that I'm a a great salesperson because I do three things. I listen, I listen, and I listen. Like (laughs) whatever your story is. Yes. But you got to know it. Mm. You got to know it because then you're just sending out anything. And you can't build a relationship unless you have a, a great relationship with yourself. So like we're so busy, but we're not too busy to care enough about ourselves to do that. Right. Right. So if you can do that, and you can look at yourself, how, how you truly are and the sacrifices you made and the one or two or three great things about yourself, mm-hmm. you know, life becomes much easier. It's much easier to tell a story. You feel confident about reaching out to somebody because there's confidence in you because there's you're looking at yourself in a really positive, good way because right. now you have a story that you can articulate. Mm. I love that story. And you, I like that you mentioned, you referenced your 30 second, uh, your pitch that you have and you know it, how long did it take for you to come up with that? And how, like how many different versions did you have? And I'm just curious to hear. (laughs) I mean, listen, if you sat down and focused, you know, for a half a day, you could have an amazing story, but you would have to focus. That means not getting on Instagram when your thing dings. That means not getting on Facebook. That means not like you have to really, and you're worth it. Like we're Mm. worth it. I'm worth it. Um, And when I'm able to articulate who I am, people actually want to listen. So like, these are just elementary things that people don't go. I can tell you, I've been to so many women's events and I've spoken at thousands of women i'm like who has a personal mission statement yes and how how many people know it better than the company they work for even when they own their own company Mm -hmm. they can't even articulate what they do concisely that is true that is true and we own we own the outcome of that right that's our power yes so shame on us for not doing that and shame on me for not doing that for so many years but no more and never again <laughs> like someone asked me the other day what is my superpower i said people, mm, people. It's, it's very simple okay i take time to understand who they are okay i know that i'm a consumer before i'm an employee i know my statistics around black women around my age what i do how i move what i buy how often i just googled the other day I said, do more, because think about it. We're in COVID right now and women are more social than men. So what are men doing? <laughs> men don't get on social media the way women do. Okay. Men aren't, aren't having house parties and FaceTime. Men go to the internet to get research and information. Like you can Google it. These are statistics. Okay. So I was thinking about, I was like, man, men have a, re- a transition now, but what an opportunity for women. Because we're on it, we're connecting, we know how to, you know, tell personal stories. So that means that we can be successful in a virtual world in a really big way. Mm. Are we doing that? No. We're following other people's brands and making them famous. Right. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. (laughs) Wow. Well, speaking of virtual world and amplifying your true self. For the question of, and I hear this question a lot, and, and also for those of you who are watching this, please, if you if you have a question, post the question in the, in the feed, in the comments, and we can try to get to them, and I can actually put some of them on the screen. And if you're on LinkedIn, I won't be able to put your question on the screen, but I will be able to reference it as I'm looking at my phone here. So I just want to make sure I remind everybody, please, if you have questions, let us know and continue to share. I've this answered well. all the questions. <laughs> I love it. She's already been proactive and answered the questions. But when we think about 
platforms and there's a lot a lot of talk a lot of times from people well i know i need to be a little bit more aggressive and active on social and tell my story and share information but i don't know which one to go to or is it linkedin and or there's twitter i'm not feeling twitter or video i'm not i'm not feeling myself of how i look or i can't you know wax poetic on a podcast like what what advice would you give someone who are who's trying to figure out what platform to tell their story and to be seen and to be heard. So the first thing is whatever you do, be relevant. Just don't be right. Got it. So be relevant. And I think what that means is that what I appreciate about the conversation we had before we, you hit click is like, Michelle, this is who tunes into me. This is who my consumer is. This is who my audience is. This is what they look like. This is where they are in their walk in their life. Now, every single person can know who, they are appealing to. So then why are you on a platform that nobody that you're appealing to actually looks at? Exactly. Because it's cool, because you think, because it's right. So you also have to remember that you're speaking to people and you want them to respond and react mm-hmm. and hopefully you're trying to change your life and give back and do something meaningful, even if that's just to entertain. Where are the people that you're most connected to? So I can't t- like this is a, this is not a this is business. Right. Right. This is a this is you got to at least have the fundamentals of that. And so, listen, I use LinkedIn a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And if I think about it, <laughs> yes. right? No, but if I think about it, Love I can. Ha- I have 7,000 LinkedIn's, right? Okay. But I had 20,000 views when I posted a video because that audience shared because they're social and this and that. I'm not going to get the same response on Instagram or Facebook potentially. So, right. you know, I'm testing and posting things everywhere and I'm seeing who's responding. Right. So where's the first thing I'm going to post something? LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. Exactly. And then I'll give it to Insta and I'll give it to Facebook, but they haven't responded in the same way to me. Mm. Mm. So you got to take the time. Nothing's easy. Right. Everything takes sacrifice. Everything takes preparation, data, insight, research. you got to be invested in yourself to understand, test, and then give feedback and then move in a smart way. That's actually a great analogy, not just regarding what social media platform to be active on, but also in life. Because I was listening to what you said, Michelle, and you listened, uh, listen, listen, you listened and observed where you were getting the most traction, who was responding to you, who's your target audience. And you put that as a priority, you put those platforms as a priority as opposed to some of the other ones, right? Not to say that you would avoid them, but you would nurture those relationships in that platform a little more like LinkedIn. And that same, the same could be said about just everyday relationships. In your walk professionally or in your job or your constituency, your customers, your colleagues, uh, your community, your congregation, (laughs) um, see who's responding to you. Look at the individuals that tend to kind of give you a little bit more of a little bit more love here and there based on the things that you say or the things that you do. And I think that's where you can leverage the most traction, not to say that you would avoid other people. So when you said that, it really spoke to me because that could be applied again in just life. So let's talk a little bit more about relationships as as well, because you and we talked about this many times and we've shared on this even during this conversation about the power of relationships and how you got to where you are. And I talk a lot about nurturing relationships, even as I talked about the mid career mastery roadmap that I have as a methodology. And part of that is nurturing your key relationships and your network. And you speak about this as well with a strategic framework. How should someone, especially in this age, in this mid-career age, or if you're 40 plus and you're more seasoned experienced, which are positive attributes and assets, by the way, think about their portfolio of individuals that they have nurtured along the way. What can they do right now, right now, at this moment and beyond to make sure that their relationships will continue to add fruit to not only themselves, but how they can add fruit to their lives? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the first thing um, I think everyone should do, and I guarantee no one does this, take an assessment on who you're connected to first. Okay. Because we're just trying to add more people. We're trying to get to people. Like, so you don't even know where you are. You don't even know what lives in your own backyard. Right. And so I did it. So I would like, I'm interested in a company. I'm a Google. Do I have any connections to that company? Mm. I'm like, oh man, I do. (laughs) Wow. Right. Yes. And, 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 and it's also a great way because guess what's going to happen right now? Our social media is our resume. 
That is true. And so it's an also an opportunity to like, it's like, what did that person just say? Like, like oh no, you got to block them <laughs> because you're, you don't represent my brand oh, and this is oh not funny. Oh, man. So I think the first thing, anyone who can hear this should take an assessment on who follows them. It's going to take you a week, right? Go through LinkedIn and then just like, what are you interested in? You're in the music business. You're interested in that. You want to get into television. Mm -hmm. See who you're connected to. See who your friends are connected to. Mm -hmm. Because why start something new when there's low hanging fruit? Mm. Like it is not brain surgery. It really is. But you got to slow down enough. And be logical enough. And we've all been given good sense. Mm -hmm. And so it hit me one day. I was like, yo, I'm out here in these streets hustling up a relationship. Let me see who I can have connect me. Mm. We talked about this earlier. I I I mentioned a young lady who I love, Danielle Lee. I'm going to throw on the spot. Yes. Left Spotify, went to the NBA. She's a dope sister. I was like, yo, she need to be on this show, right? I heard that, Michelle. (laughs) But you know what? But it it doesn't hurt to connect. And she doesn't have time. She's going to be honest because she's that type of sister. And like, we respect that. Like, you're busy. We get it. Your mom, your wife, you're an executive, start a new job, get it. Um, And she's connected me to some people, Mm. you know, because I Google, I was like, yo, you know, D knows so-and-so. We got to do that. And we got to be comfortable enough. Now, this is the thing. If you've been a jerk your whole life and you've only taken and not given, then you can't expect anybody to give to you. That's so true. I told you when we started that I worked at a hotel. I don't sleep in a hotel room unless I leave a gratuity to the point where I will send money back in an envelope. I was like, did we leave money? I was like, what? Wow. So, like, I make sure that I give in this time of, of COVID, you know, there's some people that are impacted that work with me or in my home. They're getting a PayPal. Now, maybe it wasn't what they were getting because they can't be here and work, mm-hmm. but I'm handing out blessings and I know God's going to bless me for that. And that's not why I did it, but it's the way of the universe. Wow. And so you can't expect to be connected if you've never connected. Wow. If, you're, if you're a bad person, don't expect a good relationship. <laughs> it all comes back to yourself, right? <laughs> I love that. that's a tweet of one moment. You can't expect to be connected if you haven't connected. I love that. I may steal that for you, Michelle. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need to be better at Twitter because I love Twitter, but I just what? I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> hey, it's all good. No, I love LinkedIn yeah. too. But you know, you have you definitely have, have shared some at least ten tweetable moments there. So we got to yeah, get yeah. you. We got to get get it out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I got to do better, right? I'm gonna do better. It's all, do better. It is, but it's all, it's interesting. So you said to that we I joked about connection and making sure that you add value and the people that you surround yourself with. And you're right. A lot of the times it's a numbers game. And I talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. Like being a powerful brand or a powerful leader is really not about the number of followers you have or connections. And true, the more people that you could add value to does help. But again, how many how often, how many of those followers or connections that you have on these platforms do you actually know? Or better yet, how many of them have right. you added value to? So I think I love the fact that you really got down and execute executional f- framing as far as taking some time to look through your connections and kind of figure out, well, who, 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 which of these individuals can I have a conversation with or do they work at this location? But at the same Absolutely. time, not just what you can get from them, how can I add value to them as well? And so I love that we can't just be focused on a numbers game, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. it only takes nope. one. It only takes one, one person. One person. You Absolutely. You never know. And again, why I'm so passionate about kind of, not kind of what I do and the people that I serve and the people that are in our generation and the people that are 40 plus that are in this magical middle that has, but they have so many years of experience in relationships is because a lot of us don't understand and understand the gems that we have at our disposal. That I mean, that means the number of relationships that we have cultivated, cultivated yeah. over the years in our professional lives. And we may think that the people that we haven't talked to in five years or so, that they can't do anything for me and I can't do anything for you, for them, but you'd be amazed. You and I go back since early 2000s, right? And we see yep. each other every now and then. But yep. look, we're, I, I'm so glad you're here because you're adding value to me and to my audience. And we're creating magic here. So I love the fact that you you touched on that. And with your work you're doing now with Strategic Chic, would you would you say that how will you define that brand, that movement as part of your legacy? Like when you think about it, how yeah. would you define it as part of your legacy? You know, I'm having some really really interesting conversations, but Strategic is part of my you know framework. It's part of my belief system. 
And when I Googled, I said, what makes a successful company? Yes. And it gave me seven characteristics, empathy, listening, um, being forward thinking. And then I said, what are the characteristics of a woman? They align up perfectly. Love it. But yet women are not getting the same type of you know, amplification, same type of elevation mm-hmm. um, in companies. Matter of fact, most of the tasks that women do aren't promotable, but they generate revenue. Okay. Or some type of output because they're so reliable, because they multitask, because they are empathetic, because they can pull people in. Matter of fact, if you put women in a position of authority in a company, your company is going to be more culturally diverse because she's empathetic about that. Like everything good. Yeah. But she's not getting what she's worth. And this company, this lens at this time is focusing on that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, I applaud everything that you're doing. And I've watched your journey from afar. I'm watching it front and center on the front row right now. And it is such a <laughs> it is such a blessing because I truly feel that you were put here for a reason. You're adding so much value and this brand of not just strategic, but also the brand of Michelle G., is something that we all need. And I think about your story. It's such a powerful story. And speaking of stories, so before we wrap up, there's always a question. And those who watch or listen to Jennifer Amplify know that there's a final question to ask all of my guests on this podcast. And we get to see each other live right now. So, Michelle, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, yeah, Michelle. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. If there was a song that would uh-huh. play Anytime you walk down the street or walk in the room that perfectly fits your story and the brand of Michelle G. Strategic, what song would that be? What would be your own personal theme song? So, you know, I did some research, right? I was like, <laughs> what's this fool going to ask me? So, how about this? Can you, let's see if you can hear this. I'm going to play oh, wow. it. I'm going to play it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Blessings, blessings. <laughs> okay. Every that's awesome. time I turn around, blessings, blessings. I can't say it, but anyway, you get it. Yo, I'm, I'm blessed, covered, no weapon formed against me. I know I walk in faith, not fear, period. Love it. Oh, period. wow. That's the first time that's been. Okay. So you got to shout out the title and the artist if you can. So everybody that. Yeah. No, can, yeah, yeah. Can, so it's can. called Blessings on Blessings by Anthony Brown. You better play it. You better walk in your blessings. You better own it. You better claim it. You better speak positivity over your life every day. Come on now. We got Roddy Rich in the background, but we play <laughs> Blessings in the morning. Let's Ooh. go. <laughs> I feel like I just went to church. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Take all the money. You I, love come it. On. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, this has been a blast. And for those of you who are watching, yeah. definitely this will also be available on the replay. Even if you have questions, put them in, put them in the comments. I mean, we, we can, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, at least I'm on Twitter, Uh, (laughs) but LinkedIn, definitely YouTube, Facebook, wherever you're watching this, I hope you enjoyed it. Michelle, if you wouldn't mind, tell everybody how they can keep in contact with you, what you're doing, your greatness, and just stay in touch with all the things that you have going on. Yeah. Listen, and if someone reaches out to me and mentions this um, Gen X Amplified. I'm going to give you a free strategy session for 30 minutes. I've charged people for this, okay? But I want to do that for somebody who's watched, who's paid attention, and who has a real need or question. So you can reach me on um, Instagram at Strategic, Twitter, I'm Strategic, on LinkedIn and Facebook, I'm Michelle TG. Love it. In the house, microphone check one, two, one, two. Let's go. <laughs> Mic drop. I love it. Everybody, did you hear that? And please share this broadcast. Share it, share it, share it. Let's amplify Michelle's greatness. Let's get more people, especially our folks, our 40 pluses, our gen exceptional individuals, so we can continue to maximize our impact and find our voice. And And maybe I'll I'll send some of your viewers, maybe I'll send one of your viewers a a free copy of both of my books. Yeah, maybe I'll do that too. uh Let's see what people have to say. I'm going to be motivated by what people have to say. (laughs) Uh Oh, you heard that. She's stepping it up. Oh, my God. All right. I love it. Michelle, this has been been so awesome. And I truly thank you. I thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. I thank you for joining me for this conversation, especially right now when we need some inspiration, some motivation, some empowerment as we we, we are quarantined. And I truly feel that lives will be changed after this. People may not realize it 
when they hang up or when they hang up or when they stop watching or maybe a day from now. But somehow, some way, somebody's life was changed today because of you. So thank you. And I applaud you. Oh, and I man, wish thanks. you all the best and continue to be, be exceptional, gen exceptional the way you are and keep you know throwing game. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. See you guys. Thank you so much. And thank right. you for joining us. Thank you. And this is the end of the broadcast. Everybody stay safe, stay home, wash your hands. And uh, yeah. we got this. All right. Thank you. All right. See ya. Wow. That was great. That was great. I love that chat with my friend, the speaker, author, media powerhouse, uh, champion for women, Mr. T. Chick herself. Michelle T. G. I hope you enjoyed this chat. I mean, so many, so many valuable nuggets, right? All about resiliency and nurturing strong relationships and developing your own personal mission statement. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And I love, I love that personal theme song, right? Blessings, blessings. Check it out. And so remember, go to genxamplify.com to not only listen to this episode, but also you can watch. You can watch the conversation as we did film it live on video, which is always a special treat. And make sure you follow. Make sure you follow Michelle G on all of our platforms, including LinkedIn, Facebook, IG, and Twitter. And if you enjoyed this conversation and you've gotten a lot of value, please go and give us a great rating and review on iTunes because that would help us spread the word of the podcast. I would truly appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for listening, for subscribing, for being part of this movement. This is Gen X Amplified, the podcast and platform dedicated to you, the powerful and exceptional generation between those brilliant boomers and magnificent millennials. And I'll say it again. This is actually more than a podcast. This is a movement. Take care.